Well, hello there. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. I'm Crystal Crawford. Uh, I keep waiting for the week when I'm not Crystal Crawford. Like, who will I be next week is what I'm wondering. Um, <laughs> that never ceases to entertain me. So, welcome to today's show. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm always excited about the week's topic, but this particular topic this week for me has been, um, hey, do you like my shrub? <laughs> I have a new shrub. Actually, I get a lot of shit for this shrub. If you're not, if you're not watching on Facebook Live, <laughs> then you won't know what I'm talking about, but I had an orchid there, and then I was like, let's try the shrub. So, everybody say hello to my shrub. Um... <laughs> You know, the joys of online business are that you get to do whatever the fuck you want and play with it and see how it works for you. Hi, guys. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Torgan. Hi, Eva. I loved the orchid, too. I know the orchid's coming back. I had to try the shrub. All right. <clears throat> Enough about the shrub. So this week's topic is, I'm looking down at my computer here. Um, so the six elements that you require to create a multi six-figure business. Online business is really where I'm focusing today. Um, and you know what, this whole topic came up, it, well, this topic is up in my world all the time because it's something that I'm constantly creating for myself. And actually, I just finished a telecall with Gary Douglas called Business Time, which is how to create a multi-million dollar business from awareness. And that's actually what I'm in the process of creating. Um, but I wanted to sort of not scale it back. I wanted to sort of give you guys the, the things or the elements of what it is that I used to get me here. Um, it's not stuff that you haven't heard me say before, but I don't know if I've ever put it together in this way before. And what I started to do is I started to look at like, when I'm being me in business, when I'm being me with what I'm creating online, like what are the, what are the factors? What are the things that actually make it fun for me that actually uh, make it create? I'm so ADD right now. I've got like 18 things going through my head. Are you, I'm so aware of you guys. Hi. Um, <laughs> so actually, that's the first element is awareness. Um, you've got to be. See, the thing about the thing about anything is that the only the, nothing creates for me the way it creates for you. Now, that's that's the bitch about stuff like online business. So one of the things that 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 torqued me into creating this call, creating this show was that I see a lot of stuff on Facebook that talks about the formula and the eight steps and the six things and the the do this formula, do this funnel and you're going to get these results. And when I was first creating online business, I, I sort of fell for some of those. Part of it was research and part of it was like, oh, well, I want to have like, you know, a seven figure business from one funnel. Like, what is that? And so, you know, I signed up for a lot of people's email lists and got their, got their point of view. And, you know, there is this, there's this methodology that exists, some of which is like really creative and some of which is, comes from a lot of conclusion that if you get people into um, a thing of some sort that you're going to funnel them into basically your point of view. You're going to funnel them into what's actually what, what you're telling them is going to create for them. And the thing about us humanoids is like we desire shortcuts. By the way, humanoid means that you have 18 different things going on all at the same time. Um, when it comes to judgment, you don't function from judgment. You are aware of judgment and you're more likely to judge yourself than anybody else. And, and the thing about us as beings is like we need 82 things going on at all times. We want it yesterday and um, we want to find the shortcuts to having it happen. So I'm a shortcut seeker of magnitude. And, you know, so so in that effort, I was looking at I looked at everything. I tried out everything and some of it was really great. And some of it didn't create for me in the way that they said it was going to create because it didn't actually work for me. And so the first major thing about any kind of business, anything you're creating, whether it's an online business or a brick and mortar business or a life, is that you absolutely have to and require your awareness. Now, the thing about awareness is what's light for you is true for you and what's heavy is a lie. And, and that's just the bare beginnings of awareness. You know, that's the, that's the first basic tool of awareness that you have to start to use when you're creating business. It's like, okay, so that thing's light, so I'm going to follow that and get whatever I can get out of it, whatever it's there. I want to give you an example about following awareness that's totally, that illustrates the non-linearity of awareness. Um, most recently, um, we, me and my roommates were, uh, sorry, so many things. 
we just moved into this really beautiful house in West Vancouver. And we had been looking for a place for two months. And we, excuse me, we'd asked a bunch of questions. We were sort of getting clear on what we desired in the house and blah, blah, blah. And, and then it started to solidify into we needed a house that was exactly like this, this, and this. And so we were having a hard time finding a house because as soon as your desires or the energies you're aware of solidify, they actually leave the realm of awareness and they enter the realm of conclusion. And from conclusion, you can create nothing. So for example, even saying like, this is one of the secrets, even saying like I desire a six-figure business is actually a conclusion. Uh, but I will talk more about that in the three trainings I have after this. Even specifying a dollar amount is a conclusion and a limitation. So anyway, so we're looking for this house and we get out of conclusion. We go to this class with the Bowmans. They introduce more questions into our world and we're still looking for a house. And so we add more questions to the mix and we had been going on to Craigslist to get listings for houses. So after the class, when we were more space and more question and more curiosity, finally, um, we went back on Craigslist and I found five listings for houses. Well, all we did, we didn't look at the pictures, we didn't look at the price, we didn't look at any of the factors that would have normally had us eliminating those things. We actually looked at the listings themselves and asked three questions, I think. If I can remember them, I'll tell you. Um, truth, is this going to expand or contract all of our agendas? Yes or no. Truth, will this create the future we desire? Yes or no. And there was one more that I can't remember. So those two. Now, we did that for all five listings and we got a yes and a yes on this one listing that the house cost like 3,800 a month. It was in really rough shape. It wasn't even really something that we would normally go see based on our list of things, but we chose it because we got yeses. So we go to visit this house and um, the real estate agent that is showing us this house has also shown us like five other houses, one of which we're living in right now. So she's showing us this teardown. It was a teardown and it was a short lease and I didn't know why it was light. It was just light, so I chose it. And she's showing us around and we're, it's very clear, especially once we get down to the basement, that there's no way we're living in this even for six months to save money or anything. And so we go back upstairs and I said, you know what, this isn't going to work. And she said, yeah, I know. And I said, I had just been given some information about the real estate market in Vancouver. And I knew that houses in this area are not moving right now. They're not renting. They're not selling. They're not moving. So I said, hey, that, that one house that you showed us, the one we're living in right now, um, what, like, is there any other possibility with that house? And she's like, yeah, whatever happened with that? I thought you liked it. And I was like, oh, we liked it a lot. I was like, it was the price point that didn't work for us because it was like 12 grand a month. And so she ended up saying, well, let me see what I can do. And we ended up creating a deal that worked exactly for what we were asking for, for this house that we actually wanted, which came in a totally different way. And that is the gift of your awareness. Now, when you are creating an online business in specific, you have to start looking at, like there's all these different elements to creating it, right? You need your awareness. You've gotta be willing to choose and demand of yourself to create it. Um, you've gotta go, you've gotta be an avid seeker of information and, and insatiably curious. And um, I'm, I've got a list right here I'm cheating from, but I had to write all this down because I'm like, I just be this. And so how do I break this down for you guys? So, and then it's the never give up, never give in, never quit, and the willingness to play and create. Those are all of the elements. Okay, so, so in the creation of a business, like as you're out there, you know, teaching yourself how to do this, because it's not like there's an, a school of online business, right? Like, I mean, I started one, but even that's not a school. That's a container for your questions, right? That's a container for your curiosity and for what do you want to know and what do you want to get out of this? So there's no school. It's just unless you go to B school, but then even B school with Marie Forleo is going to teach you how her way of creating online business. It's going to tell you, you need an avatar. You need a this, you need a this, you need a this. It's all of which are conclusions that you may or may not need to actually create in the way that creates for you. And if I had one desire to, you know, with this whole topic, it would be to reintroduce a totally other way of creating business, which is exactly how I've done it. So two years ago, only two years ago, I, I had done a little bit of, I had dabbled online. I had a, a small following on Facebook. I had been working with another facilitator, so I didn't have my own business. And in May, in Van, um, I moved to Vancouver. Two years ago, I moved to Vancouver. I had a brand new boyfriend, a brand new house. I had at least a roof over my head, but I was completely maxed out, $40,000 in debt. 
and I had just quit my job. So I, I don't know what I was thinking. I wasn't thinking. I was just choosing. I was like, ah, this has to change. And then I spent, after that, I spent three weeks, like, truly with my head up my ass, like, feeling pathetic, feeling sorry for myself, crying, trying to get this guy to take care of me. He didn't want to take care of me. He'd gotten together with me because I was awesome, and then I stopped being awesome. And <laughs> it was this whole schmozzle. And I spent three weeks in the shits. And finally, at the end of that three weeks, I realized nobody was going to create my life for me. Nobody. And the one possibility that I had for income that wasn't working at a restaurant was online. And so I just started like I literally I started with the first thing that came to my mind, which is like I, I was going to use interesting point of view. I had this point of view for at least three days and everybody else in the world was invited to do it with me. And I started this free group and like 300 people came to play. And then somebody suggested that I make it a paid thing, which had never occurred to me. <laughs> so I created this really impromptu landing page. And I had enough people pay me that I created my first $900. Now, I will tell you, when that money first came in, I was like, I, I, <laughs> I think I looked at the PayPals and I went, oh, like, how, wow, like people actually want to pay me for this? You know, it was like, it was, it, it I don't know, it was this beyond. And and but but what that did is it created in my world this sense of like, oh, I can do this. Like, I think, oh, well, I can do some, something. <laughs> and so I just kept going. And I literally, literally took my income from like $22,000 that year to 160 by the end of the year in seven months. And I mean, I'd been to a lot of classes. I had a lot of tools. But at the end of the day, it was choice. Like, I absolutely just had to choose. And it was literally like choosing between the thing that was tugging me, that seemed pretty easy for me, that I just hadn't tried yet, that I just hadn't chosen yet, and and going to work at a restaurant and I was like well between those two choices I'll choose this road that's way less traveled I've never done it before I've never had anybody really show me except I've seen a few people do it this way I can try that way um, and 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 I started and it created like it, it really created and then I made a demand that I stopped using credit so I, I started paying for all my classes in cash but this combination of choice and demand and choice and demand and playing and getting more information and choice and demand and getting more information and awareness is what created that. Not some formula, not because I went to some school, not because I had somebody show me all the ropes. Although, although I did have a leg up, I did have a, a friend that did show me some of the back end systems you could use, which anybody can do. But beyond that, it was up to me to choose and create and choose and create and choose and create. And, um, and according to all the experts, my business should not have created the way that it did. But what I did is I used my awareness of what I had available to me. I used my awareness of what was already getting created, of what I already had around me, of what, of the, the market that I already had, of already, of all the stuff that I already had. I used my awareness and went, well, it shouldn't work, but it is. So how does it get better than that? And what else can I create? And, and here's the thing, like, one of the things that Gary said on his business time call yesterday was, um, how did he put this? It was two days ago, I guess. He basically said, he basically said, like, we cut off our awareness of what is possible. And he said, you know, that's the thing. He's like, you know what's possible. I'm going to turn this light down. The sun is like, <laughs> I've got lots of lights on me right now. The sun, like, like, he's like, you know. You know what's possible. He's like, the reason you don't choose it, though, is that you'd have no excuse not to choose and create. And I, that just, that hit me in a really warm and fuzzy way this time. Like, I've heard him say stuff like that before where I went to, went to making myself wrong about that. But I was like, oh, I do know. I do know what's possible. And I do have what it takes to actualize it. And I know people that can assist me. And I do know. And I'm simply not choosing it. And after that call, the next day, Saturday, yesterday, no, the day before, I don't know what day it is. I spent a full 24 hours, I think it was actually the day of that call, doing nothing. Like, I just laid around, I watched movies. Because sometimes what happens is when my life is about to level up, and you may notice this in your world, when you do know, when you know, when you know you're on the precipice of a choice that's going to create more in your world than you've ever created before, when you know you're on the precipice of of something that's going to expand you in ways that you can't articulate, you know. And I, every time I come back from a major class, like I just came back from a seven day, 
Um, I just did Gary's business time call, which is a massive game changer. There's, there's this different space that's available to me for me to choose from. And, and I've just been wanting to like do nothing. I have, I go through this phase where I'm like, I can't, I can't do a call, you know, where I just want to like, I just want to become one with the cushions and the couch and the sheets and the, and do nothing for a minute. And I hadn't been letting myself do that all week. And so finally I did. And it was awesome. It was epic. I was also a little bit sick. So I I created a reason and a justification to do it. I laid around. I watched Netflix. I did nothing. And then the next morning I got up and I was looking at the sunset, sunrise, whatever. Some part of the world it was setting. And um, I was just looking out. And I'm like, I'm in this new house. I've got this new life ahead of me that I've chosen to create chosen to be present for, chosen to have. And I can either keep not choosing or I can just choose to create and not, not think about whether or not it's the right thing, not actually go to conclusion of whether or not people are going to choose anything, not like just skip all the stuff that I've done before, which is going to all the conclusions. And it was, co- it was a cool moment because I, I did, I chose it and I started working and creating at the pace and the speed that I love, that nurtures me. And I got some things moving and I got some... And, you know, I think one of the things that's occurring for me and one of the elements that's absolutely essential to you creating anything is the deep knowing, which is the acknowledgement of what you're actually capable of. And, And one of the things that you can do to really get a sense of that, if you're just starting or if you're in the middle is really look at what you've created so far of, in your life. And it doesn't matter if it seems negative or if it seems positive. If it's potent in any way, if, if what you've got showing up is potent in any way, even if it isn't potent, if it's there, you created it. And it was really starting to know this that empowered me to begin choosing and choosing and choosing and choosing and playing and getting awareness and playing and choosing and playing and getting awareness. And now, you know, two and a half years in, two and a, I don't know, two and a half years into having an online business, I have a lot more awareness and I have a lot more sense of what I can choose to actually exponentialize what I'm creating. And I wouldn't have had that if I hadn't have started way back there with my awareness then, right? And that's the thing about life. So most, we're really taught to create our life and to create our business with the end in mind. But the thing about life and the thing about business is there's never an end, And when you create with the end in mind, you're actually creating for death. You're creating your thing for death, (laughs) which is crazy. Like, why would you do that? Why would you actually create a business that ever had to end? What if instead you could create a business from the place of like, what would it take for this business to outlast me by 500 years? Like, what choices would you be making if the business you were creating was actually a business that could outlast you by 500 years? And that's something I've really started asking. And and the second question I've really been asking is like, if I were being, if I were willing to be the leader, if I were being the leader in my business, who could I put in charge of this? Because there's this whole other conversation about being the leader of your business and being in charge of it, which means you do everything. And so there's this other facet of it, which is like, what if you were leading your business into a 500 year future? Like that's very different from being in charge of a, um, a side hustle, right? Like that's a really different energy from a side hustle. And it's not that either one of them are wrong. It's that it's just really looking at like, what do you really desire to create? And the more I look at what I desire to create, and this is, this is key to having, to creating six figures, creating seven figures, to creating anything is, is really looking at what you desire to create. I think a lot of us short change our desires. And we think that what we desire is like three people in our bars class or 10 people in our bars class or, you know, five people signing up for coaching with us or, you know, 10 people on our email list or whatever. Like we actually look at really, really small desires as if those are enough, as if those match the energy of what it is we desire to create. And actually what starts to generate the money and starts to generate is, is, is invigorating and inspiring yourself to the degree that you require to be invigorated and inspired. And I don't know about you, but I'm not inspired by a small business. I'm inspired by a multi-million dollar global business. That inspires me. How to get there? I don't have the how, but the thing is I don't have to have the how. I simply have to be inspired and begin because all of us begin somewhere. 
And it was so funny. On one of the first business time calls with Gary, there was this chick that she just wanted to skip over the five years that she pretty much assumed it was going to take her to get to here. She had not even started. She wanted to skip over the middle parts and just get to the place where she had was finished, where she had the business. And he's like, Gary, Gary's like, I hate to break it to you, darling, but you're going to have to get to work. <laughs> like, that's just not how things work. And when you look at the institution of anything, whether it's a business or a new place to live or a new job, there's that starting point where you're like, you just have to start. Like when you need a new job, what do you do? You start anywhere. You start looking for new jobs. You put a resume together. You go on websites. You just start the process. You get the energy moving. And that's the start of it. And then as you're creating it and as you're in the middle of it, so like as in the middle of my business, I get to keep asking for more. Keep being more, keep wondering more, keep actually expanding the energy of what I'm creating. Because now, two and a half years in, I've started. I got people on my list, I've got things that are creating, I've got stuff that's going on, right? So there's this momentum that I've already created. I have a weekly radio show. Hello, everybody. Um, you know, there's stuff that's going on. So now I have to keep asking for more and I have to keep expanding the energy and I have to keep wondering what's next and keep inviting myself to more because otherwise it gets boring. And that's the thing about awareness as well is actually getting how you function, getting what's going to inspire you to create. Um, oh, people are online. This is the first time I've ever had a callers. I'm going to pick up. Let me see how this goes. Hello, who is this? Okay, I don't actually know how to do this. <laughs> Live. Hello, is anybody there? Nope. Okay, so I have callers, but I don't know how to answer them. So I'm sorry, callers. <laughs> Next time, I will be better about that. Um, okay, cool. So for my next radio show, <laughs> I will educate myself on how to take a caller. Um, cool. <laughs> so distracting. Okay, so this is the other thing about business is you never have to do it right. You can do it bad, you can do it wrong, and you can do it anyway. And that's a huge thing about um, creating anything is actually being willing to play and just get it wrong and do it anyway. And truly, like, you know, I'm into the multi six figures with my business. And I'm telling you that because, like, in two and a half years, that is possible. You can do it quicker than that. You can do it at whatever speed you want to do it. And it's really the willingness to be whatever it is that's required for you to be to have what you desire. It's really the willingness to choose and choose and choose and choose and play and get awareness and choose. And it's all, and, and really, really, really get a sense of you. Like, what are you capable of that nobody else in the world is capable of? What choices do you have available that nobody else has available? Ah, oh, two more people called in. I'm going to try again. Hold up. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Three people called in. Hello, are you there? Hello, hello. Hi. I'm great. How are you? Who is this? Uh huh. <laughs> okay, I just had a prank caller. That's a new one. <laughs> All right, cool. Anyway, um, I want to recap, sorry for the blah, blah, blah all over the place today. Uh, the recap is the six elements um, to create. So, <laughs> this is a little bit of a shit show today. <laughs> I just had a caller that said, um, hello, I have scabies. I've gotten into some trouble. So I didn't know that was possible on a radio show. Apparently you can have prank callers. Um, okay, awareness, choice, and demand of you. Awareness of you and how you function. Awareness of the market. Awareness of what you know. Awareness of what it's time for. Choice and the demand of you to create whatever it is. Okay? This is huge. Choosing it. Choosing to create. 
Choosing to create whatever online business, whatever business you're creating. Choice. Demanding of you that you do whatever it takes and be whatever it takes to make it happen in the world, no matter how long it takes, no matter how long it takes to show up. Um, information and insatiable curiosity. Do you know how much I research online business? <laughs> okay, I just found out, for example, that Facebook has a whole training program on how to do ads. I'm going to be taking that. You can actually get certified with Facebook with ads and all the information that's out there about Facebook ads. Um, I'm, I'm part of another online program that I pay monthly for that has 60 different classes on um, advertising and marketing and sales pages and what to look for and what not to look for, for information. Um, I'm constantly like signing up for webinars and things like that and Googling things. Get information. Be insatiably curious. I actually remember the conversation that I had with um, Chittisa Bowman about this and she's like she gets insatiably curious about the things she wants to know about like day trading and options and she researches things out the wazoo and I was realizing I do the same thing but the stuff that I'm interested in so whatever you're interested in be insatiably curious about it um, and then never give up never give up never give in never quit even if you temporarily do and you indulge for a day be willing to get up that next day and give yourself another choice and play and create and if you want more on this, I'm going to be doing three free trainings actually this next week where I'm going to be going into much greater detail about how all this works for me and empowering you to know how this could work for you so that you can really dive in and, and create whatever it is you're wanting to create. Or if you are already creating and you want your shit to be bigger, your shit to be greater, these might help too. Um, but anyway, that's it for today. I, I adore you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being in the schmazzle of learning what it is to take online callers. And what else is possible now? If you like this, give it a share. Give it a like. Give it a comment. I adore you. See you next week. Bye.